everyone, Erica from Kitty Hawk here, and today I wanted to talk about understanding how to use your approved airspace authorization. First off, let me say, great job in successfully applying and getting approved by the FAA to perform operations in your desired controlled airspace. Before you're ready to fly though, let's take a look at an approved airspace authorization from the FAA to make sure you understand how to conduct your operations within the designated parameters set in your airspace authorization. First, access your approved airspace authorization document by navigating to faadronezone.faa.gov, log in, as I have already, and then from the homepage dashboard, scroll down to part 107 waivers and authorizations and click on your approved waivers and authorizations here in dark blue. Then click on the title of your approved airspace authorization. Then under attachments, you will see a linked approval document. Click on the FAA form document link in blue here to download your approved document. Now you'll see my approved airspace authorization document from the FAA, which I applied for in a previous tutorial video about how to apply for airspace authorizations. To watch that video, click the link in the right corner. Here, you'll see that this document is a certificate of waiver or authorization. You'll see who it was issued to, where my name is stated, the point of contact phone number, meaning if needed, the FAA may contact you at this phone number at any time. In this first section, it states that you must follow all requirements of this document during your operations in the control airspace referenced in this authorization. The next section we'll look at is operations authorized. In this section, it states that the class of airspace covered in this Certificate of Authorization, or COA for short, letting you know you must follow the maximum permissible altitudes in your operations in accordance with the UAS facility maps, which you can view on Visualize It. To see here, my location is in a 200 foot ceiling grid, or you can also on Kitty Hawk under information see the permissible altitude for authorization for your location right here. Next is list of waived regulations by section and title, which does not apply as you can see NA for my COA. Then is the standard provisions section. Here you should make note as stated in numbers one and two, you'll need to have a copy of this document with you at all times during your operations in controlled airspace pertaining to this COA. My recommendation is to use Kitty Hawk's media section to store all airspace authorization and operational waiver documents for easy reference in the field when needed. To do this, open app.kittyhawk.io in your preferred browser. Then click media on the left-hand side here from the drop down menu, select documents, then click add document. Then under friendly name, enter in the name you'd like to reference for your document. I recommend using the naming convention of the airport identifier followed by airspace authorization doc, a waiver doc. Then click browse documents and attach your PDF that you downloaded from the drone zone and click save. Now, if we scroll down, we can see all my approved airspace authorization or operational waiver documents stored together, including the one I just added for KCLM. If I click the title, it will open the attached PDF in a new browser tab, or I can click down to download the PDF to my device, update to change the title, and delete if I'd like to remove this document. Other provisions in this section state, as in number three, that I am the responsible party to abide by all parameters set in this COA. Number four, that this certificate is not transferable. My COA for KCLM is valid August 1st, 2020 through July 31st, 2022, as seen here. Now onto the second page, the next section is called Special Provisions. Under Contact Information, it states that I am the responsible party for the overall safety of the UAS operations under this COA 
and I must be available at the listed phone number at all times during the operations if the KNUW air traffic control tower or designated representative needs to contact me. Next, it states as the responsible person on this COA, if any other persons are operating a UAS under this COA, I must maintain a current list of pilots by name and the remote pilot certificate number numbers associated with this COA's operations. This list must be able to be presented for inspection upon request from the administrator or an authorized representative. An example of when this may be necessary is if another Part 107 pilot needed to conduct the drone inspections at one of the cell towers in this controlled airspace for me, I will need to maintain a list of that operator's name and remote pilot certificate number to be shown to an administrator or an authorized representative if requested. I'd recommend storing this list in the documents section of Kitty Hawk as well for easy access in the field. This section reminds you that your operations must occur between civil sunrise or 30 minutes after sunrise and civil sunset or 30 minutes before sunset in your local time zone. B states, that before operations in this controlled airspace should occur, you should always check the UAS facility map using Visualize It or Kitty Hawk's app to check for prohibited airspace, TFRs. Letter D of this section is a reminder that before operating in this controlled airspace, always check the UAS facility maps using Visualize It or the Kitty Hawk app to check for prohibited airspace notifications, TFRs, or any changes that may have been made to the map since you last checked to the altitude, airspace modifications, etc. The last provision in this section is to prevent UAS contact with special VFR operations, UAS operations are not authorized when there is a ceiling of less than 1,000 feet AGL. This provision pertains to unfavorable weather conditions which result in the cloud ceiling being less than 1,000 feet AGL. You can access this information from the home screen of the Kitty Hawk app under the flight conditions section under cloud cover. As seen here, the cloud cover is 0% and the ceiling is at 4,532 feet AGL. So I would be fine to start my operations while still abiding by the stated provision seen here in letter E. The next section is coordination and communication requirements. It is very important that you read and abide by these provisions because as you can see under letter A of this provision, I, or the operator, am required to contact KNUW Air Traffic Control Tower or base operations no less than 30 minutes prior to my flight or flights to secure KNUW Air Traffic Control permission to commence flight operations. They also list the phone number I need to call to contact the Air Traffic Control Tower for this area. Also in this section, is all the information I will need to have prepared to share with the air traffic control when I do call. This information includes the Certificate of Authorization COA number, which can be found here, the primary telephone number of the pilot in command, schedule of flight, time and duration, location where the flight will occur, You'll want to give the GPS coordinates and the radius in which you plan to fly, the altitude at which you will be flying at, verified current weather, know the ceiling and visibility, and communication requirements. Make sure when you call that you have all this information prepared and ready to share as to not waste air traffic controls time or delay your flight operations from beginning. If you are required to call air traffic control 30 minutes prior to your flight or flights, you will also be required to call them back immediately upon completion of UAS flight operations as stated in letter B of this provision. 
Remember that the coordination and communication requirements will be different for each COA you receive, so make sure to read and follow carefully all of the instructions in this document. The final section is emergency slash contingency procedures. This lists the required procedures in case of a lost link slash lost communications with your drone. These provisions state if the UAS loses communications or loses its global positioning system signal, the unmanned aircraft must return to the predetermined location within the operating area and land, and that the pilot in command must abort the flight in the event of unpredicted obstacles or emergencies. Thank you for watching and I hope this video was informative and for more information on understanding your approved airspace authorization, check out the blog linked in the description below. Subscribe to our channel for more video tutorials on how to use different tools and processes to help your drone flying experience be safer, easier, and FAA compliant. For myself and the entire Kitty Hawk team, fly safe and fly off.